with Tony Monticello, who's a broker realtor with Caldwell Banker United and also the president of the Monticello Group, which is a builders and renovators company. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming on the show, Tony. Thank you. And we touched upon it a little bit on another interview that we had today, but how is the real estate environment going right now in Lake Norman? Are you, what, what kind of trends are you seeing? And is it as bad here as it is everywhere else? Uh, locally, our numbers are increasing monthly. So we're, we're getting an uptick in contracts and closings monthly. We're still down year over year. Mm -hmm. um, the number of distress sales that are closing is going down relative to the rest of them too. So we're starting to work out of the mire. We mm -hmm. still have a way to go. So the sales are actually not distressed sales that are pumping up the market right now, or the numbers that you see that are upticking are not? Nationally, about 31% of the sales are distressed sales, foreclosure, um, short sale, pre-foreclosure. Okay. But that's down from about 40 some odd to 50 some odd percent. So we're okay. starting to work those numbers back into balance. Okay. Um, we certainly need the distressed sales to, to clear out. I mean, mm -hmm. it's actually a good thing that they are selling. We need that stuff to move. Mm -hmm. So, but we're, we're moving back towards a little bit uh, more increase in traditional sales. Um, sales prices are still down year over year, mm -hmm. but they're increasing monthly. That's what's important. So okay. we're, in, we're in the right trend um, in the last few months. In fact, since January, every month we've increased our closing numbers and our um, uh, sales prices average um, have been uh, on an uptick, but we're still down year over year. Are there certain segments of the real estate market that are doing better than others? Is it kind of the, the higher priced homes, the lower priced homes, certain neighborhoods or certain areas that hold up better than others? Yeah, we have seen the, um, right now about a third or 30% 30, 30 of closings are under $120,000. So wow. a full third almost of our closings are still the lower end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and as soon as you jump above about $350,000, the ratio drops off. So our demand is less and our supply is higher once you get over 350. Mm -hmm. um, I deal a lot in the executive and luxury. And so our million to $2 million market is, is soft and our above $2 million market is, is quite soft. We're, we're getting sales, but nowhere is near mm -hmm. um, what we need to, to balance out supply and demand. Um, uh, Lake Norman area has a quarter of the million dollar plus and two million dollar plus product mm -hmm. in the whole Charlotte region. So we've got a quarter of it and we're actually doing a little bit better than the region at large in our million to two million dollar sales. It's probably because it's the lake, right? You... It's the lake effect, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've got a, uh, uh, you know, a 60 or 70 month supply on some of those products, which wow. is really out of balance. Um, uh, a six-month supply is considered balanced by the National Association of Realtors. Mm -hmm. So anytime you creep above six months, mm -hmm. you get into a buyer's market. Um, in 06, 05, 06, we were running about three and a half to five months supply. That was a, wow, that wow. Was a good seller's market. Um, it's a nice balance. So when you start creeping above six, you're going into buyer's market. Well, we're seeing neighborhoods with 20-month supply and 45-month supply and 16-month supply. So they're just still way out of balance. Those yeah, numbers, we still they, see all this building. Yeah. 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 The building has slowed down. Okay. I mean, it really has. It's it's tough right now for builders to get um, spec loan money of any kind. It's just not really available. So the building is slowing down uh, dramatically, relatively speaking, mm -hmm. uh, both commercial and uh, residential. Mm -hmm. um, so the numbers can change, you know, uh, fairly quickly as we, we just need a few more sales per month in each neighborhood and the balance will start coming down. But we, we've got a ways to work. Um, now, what if someone wants to sell, but they don't have to sell right away? Would you recommend not even putting it on the market right now, just holding off if you can, as long as you can, because you don't want to, you know, the whole day's on market, it's mm -hmm. going to sit there too long, and then somebody's going to think there's something wrong with it? Or has the environment changed that, where days on market is expected because the, the economy is so bad? That's a great question. I mean, we, we do have um, homes that sit on the market for six to nine months or a year. And that used to be um, a, a, a negative, mm -hmm. where now other brokers and even buyers realize that that's just the market. Okay. Our average day on market is right under 120 days right now. And that's a false that low. low. It's a false low. And the reason yeah. it's a false low is because people will pull off the market and pop back on, oh, okay. and the numbers get reset. So um, day on market averages are always false low. 
uh, and they don't consider if people have changed brokers or had it on the market by themselves or took it off for a month and put it back on. So uh, at a minimum, we're at 115 days right now in day on market average. Um, but people do uh, look past that a little bit more than they used to. Um, uh, something that's on the market for six months, people don't say, what is wrong with this house? They realize right. it's the market. Right. So. What about on the, on the commercial side? Um, I see a lot of empty retail space mm -hmm. and all the shopping developments from between Mooresville and Huntersville. Mm -hmm. um, some of the older centers definitely have stuff that's left right. that they haven't been able to replace. Things have been sitting open and then there's still some relatively new development that hasn't leased all their space. Right. Can you speak a little bit to how that aspect's going? Well, the the commercial market, you know, we do have a supply mm -hmm. of office and retail mm -hmm. and even industrial and, and even nationally speaking where, you know, we've got 10% vacancy rates, uh, depending on the product, um, uh, or more. Um, and the, the good news is that the construction on these products, anything that hadn't been approved back when um, you know loans were still available, mm -hmm. the construction is drying up quickly because the loans just aren't available uh, for speculation and, and uh, uh, even just to take down land. Mm -hmm. uh, land is at a standstill right now. Right, so you can consider that a um, kind of a, uh, a positive, even though it's a negative, in that in some previous recessions when we've had an oversupply, it wasn't a credit crisis. So mm -hmm. people still had access to money and they would continue to build. And so we would stack up inventory mm -hmm. during the recessive period. Well, now we're not stacking up inventory. We're just trying to work through what's already out there. And there is pull out of leases and there's you know some of that happening but we're not continuing to build and at a level that would really be damaging so mm -hmm. the thought is we can work out of this as soon as job market uh, turns which is our mm -hmm. most important factor right now mm -hmm. uh, when that turns um, and we can work out of residential and commercial locally uh, quite well and I believe better than most of the other areas of the country we've got such a strong move in demand uh, once those um, folks are able to move back 